Street Beefs. Street Beefs is probably one of my favourite places to go to to watch combat sports. I really like it. I, I love the fact that you can have people who are at the top of their game and are using Street Beefs to, to sort of elevate them to the next level. Not necessarily to, to get themselves better, but to push them in their own actual physical combat career. I really like that. I also like the fact that you can have beef matches which are always fun to watch and i really love the fact that you can get people who are not as skilled not as good but they're doing it to test themselves i really love to see that so the other day a, a video came through a video notification came through from street briefs uh, street beefs scrapyard saying crazy muay thai fight i've been doing muay thai for a while i love muay thai so i had to watch it so uh Let's do it. I've got a few thoughts about uh, how the fight actually went down, some critiques, my biggest one coming at the end with uh, what one of the fighters has done. Let me know in the comments down below if you picked that up before I mention it though. It's, uh, it's quite a big one. It's quite a big one. Let's, uh, let's watch. Are you ready? Yep. Scrap. All right, so they're quite explosive right out the start. You can sort of see that. that. That's fairly cool to see. Now, Shirtless is doing something that I picked up a few times where he, he sort of twists his elbow up. I mean, that's not really Muay Thai. That, that's definitely in, in Wing Chun. Um, and I don't... I personally don't like it. I think that I mean, that just needs all of that. If you're gonna have, use your elbow as a guard, you should get your up right there. That's way, way better. But up until this point, like Red Shirt's doing really well. Like he's explosive out of it. He's putting power into the punches. Shirtless. First time I watched this through, I thought Shirtless is is getting sort of overwhelmed. Which is not really what you want uh, in a fight. Like you don't want to be overwhelmed and then the little bits started to creep in with that shirt so again like the guys i mean so far the guys doing really really well except for this part obviously <laughs> you don't turn your back to an appointment now this part i saw and i really liked because up until this point like i'd seen red shirt throwing all that power and this was sort of like shirtless going yeah i got power too i'm gonna kick you off your feet so that was, that was quite a nice little little bit going on. Oosh, what a hit. Just that over. Oosh. Oosh. Now these forms, like they're, they're fairly good whilst they're in the stances. And Shirtless definitely has... I mean his footwork's not great. Like he, he's not top of the league. But he's not bad. Like, he's not bad at all. And certainly guy, uh, shirt, red shirt, I mean red shirt struggling at this point, and I'll go into one, but, alright so you sort of see at the end there, at the end there, the guy was, uh, both of those two did push, te uh, push kicks, teeps to the legs. That's not something that really happened. Basically, the, the, the fighting etiquette of this is uh, is sparring. So there's no elbows to the head, there's no knees to the head. And like, I mean, you, you could push kick to, you know, you could teep to the legs, but you know, it's sort of a, sort of a taboo. And as we are between the rounds now, like the shirt, rect1.com, most of it, as much of it as I could possibly get is completely eco-friendly, which was a big thing that I was focused on. All of it is ethically made. All of it is tailored to order. So if you decided that you wanted this shirt in particular with the new Erect One Fox logo, which is fantastic, then uh, you put your order in and then once your order has been put in, that's when the shirt is made for you. My mind ready? Scrap. So here we go, round two, nice little, I mean red shirt did a nice little touch and then he's, he's going again, like he's left and right hooks, that was a pretty good takedown, it wasn't a clean takedown, but it was a good takedown, caught the leg, threw him, pushed him, that was, that was good to see, it was really, really good to see. 
He's doing a lot of power. Like he's he's not even managing the distance. Like red shirt is not even managing the distance now. And shirtless, this is where things start to switch. This is where things start to change. Because typically in Muay Thai, if you watch a lot of Muay Thai bouts, you'll see that in the first stages, both of the Muay Thai fighters will go relatively, relatively light in the first round. Because they're feeling out each other. They're feeling out the guards and everything else. And then in the second round, they go straight into it. You can see in the second round here, Red Shirt is exhausted. He is exhausted at this point, and it, he's, he's just swinging blind here. He's struggling to keep his guard up. Again, I'm going to go into why in a minute, but uh, he's, he's not doing too well here. And like one of the good things, like one of the really cool techniques in Muay Thai is a teep. It's a push kick. If you do it right, it sends your opponent back. I love using a good teep because a good teep gives you space, gives you that that little second or two to breathe. And like from the distance there are now, you could teep. Right now, the only fact that the only reason that red shirt is not crumpled on the floor is because shirtless is holding back. Shirtless recognizes how exhausted his opponent is and he's just being nice. He's just being courteous with it. Like he can see the guy is wrecked. Correct one. Another bounce in there. So there we go. It's a good stance. Like shirtless doing a nice switch. And there we go. Now that kick could have landed. That kick could have been a really good kick. But Red Shirt has just not got gas in the tank anymore. He's doing fairly alright little jabs. A little bit of southpaw going on. He's, he's not really weighed up his distance that much, so it, it's quite easy to see at this point. Shirtless has got way more experience. Shirtless has done a lot of sparring, if not a fair few fights. If I had to put money on it, I'd say this was Red Shirt's first fight. Which might explain away quite a bit of it. Uh, that, that we'll get into in just a second. Certainly, all credit to the man for actually stepping inside the cage doing really well for himself in the first fight but this right here the guy is shattered the guy is exhausted he's got nothing left his block when it's up his guard when it's up is pretty much useless he's throwing wide he's throwing blind like he's not looking he's just trying to get lucky rather than analyzing where his opponent is which is fine if you're fighting someone who has no experience in fighting, that's not what he's doing. That's, that's not what he's doing at all. The checks that he's doing, I mean, they're, they're, they're okay, but he's not following them up with anything. I mean, a Muay Thai fight absolutely should be. Like, you check a kick, as soon as your, your check leg goes down, you fire up and kick it back. Straight away, it should be instinctive. So last last five seconds there on the guy is just a mess. My crowd decision. Monty Nature. Let's go! What did the guy in the red shirt do wrong? Here's the big thing, like here's the main thing, here's the main reason why he was exhausted, and it's why I think this was his first fight. If you watch the original video, you turn the sound up, you listen to the way that he, he breathes when he's throwing out those, those hits in the first, first few seconds of the round. You'll get the <clears throat> Now, when you do any sort of combat sport, any sort of fight, whether it's boxing, whether it's Muay Thai, I think even, even karate and stuff like that, you will be taught to make sounds. So in Muay Thai, quite a lot, you get quite a bit. And like sometimes it's sort of like the Bruce Lee effect, it's just playing those little mind games. But most of the time, it's to force you to breathe. Because that's the most important thing. You might feel like you can put more power if you tense everything up. And... But what you're actually doing is starving your body of air. You're starving your body of everything it needs. Like 
Your muscles need air. They need you to breathe. Fighting is stressful. When you're stressed, you need more breath. You need more oxygen. You need more air. You need to breathe more. It's why when you're in a stressful situation, your heart rate will start beating faster. You'll, you'll start having sharper breaths. You'll start doing all that more. So the fact that Redshirt is going out and he's, he's holding his breath as he's swinging these big, powerful hits, that's what's taken all of his energy. That's what ruined him. That's what emptied his gas tank. That's what sapped all of his energy. If he'd been a little more calm, a little more collective, gone straight into it, and then straight boom, bam, bam, then it would have been a different a different situation, I think. I, I'm not entirely sure he would have won anyway, but it certainly would have been a lot closer. Because he was very good at the start of the round, very explosive, got a lot of shots. But towards the end of the rounds, he had nothing. And certainly in the third round, there was nothing left to give. Again, I, now I think this was his first fight because the chances of just learning a few things and then going straight to a fight is is slim to none. It is slim to none. If I was a better man, I, I'd say this, this was his first fight. I think this was first fight nerves for this guy. I, I really do. I think this was first fight nerves. Uh, the place where I train with Muay Thai is, is a combat academy, so they also do uh, boxing there as well. And the boxing, uh, the guys there do charity events like 10 times a year. The guy who does most of the training has often said, with new fighters, he gives them a free pass on the first round because nerves get the better of them. So they go out and they go out swinging and they forget everything. But the second round, the second round is when they have to pull it back and then they start going on what they've actually been trained to do. I think the guy in Red Shirt's corner were trying to do this, but they just couldn't get it through to him. I think his nerves got the better of him. But even though, like even said that, full credit to the man for getting in the cage. He didn't have to, certainly didn't, you know, no one forced him to do it. But the fact that he wanted to do it, the fact that he's tested himself in doing it, and in doing it, he learned an incredibly valuable lesson. Hopefully he watches the tape back and he sees what he does, so that when he goes into sparring next, maybe doing a little bit of hard sparring, that will that will be something that he'll be able to work on. These guys both did really well. I think Guy in Red Shirt could have done a fair bit better if he had controlled his breathing a little bit more. But even so, good on him. Absolutely good on him. He went in there, he definitely gave it his all. You can't say for a second the guy tapped out or he chickened out. He wasn't wasn't fully there. Now the man gave. The man gave. So good on him for that. Uh, links all down below, especially to rect1.com. Lots of awesome eco-friendly merch. Should have an archery video coming out relatively soon. I know this channel has been dead for a long time uh but it's just because I've, I've been just so busy just so busy uh but yeah there we go guys uh hopefully see you next time and uh take care it's okay